I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Today we're going to do the first part of a two-part, much-requested series around the multi-protocol module and Ethos. In this video, we are going to set up a UMX TimberX with a multi-protocol module on my Twin X light. In the other video, I'll walk you through the steps necessary to get the multi-protocol wo module working correctly on the Twin X light. I've already done the setup, and so we're just going to move into it directly. First things first, we're going to power on the Twin X light. Welcome. Okay, we have the Twin X light powered on, and we need to set up a model. So we're just going to long press the model button, and that brings us to my model select menu. And because I have an awful lot of test models here, we're just going to move over to my micro tab. You'll notice here I've only got two. I've got a tab for each of my model types set up so I can just pick what I'm flying and that'll list that particular category of models. So we're just going to add one. It's an airplane. And go for that. We've got one engine. Ailerons is one channel. This aircraft does have flapperons, but it's all mixed at the uh, receiver. So we are also going to go pick one flap channel. We're going to go traditional tail, one channel each, and we are going to call this UMXT. It's the Timber X. I'll set up a model picture later. And there it's created. Now we have to do a couple of things here to get started. First thing, we're going to go on the mixers. We're going to take our flaps channel and we're going to edit. And this expects flaps on channel 6. So we are going to move flaps to channel 6. Yes. Next up, no, I have not uh, assigned a, con a control here yet. This is a little bit weird. It wants zero, minus 50, and minus 100%. So we're gonna go and do that after we set our panic button, or our safe button, because we are going to enable safe on this. So in our free mix, and we're gonna put that after rudders. No, I went down and select rudders, so th this way I've got everything in order, because channel five is going to be this one. And this is going to call safe. And the source for this is going to be the button on the edge here. So we'll click that. That's SE. That's set up. And we are going to go down here, pick the output channel, and it's going to be channel 5. Yes. Now we're going to go back here, edit, and our input is going to be SB, but we need to add a curve here. Actually, before we add a curve, let's go make sure uh, we have set the weight to 100%. Now, tap back up, we're going to add a curve, and it's going to be called flaps. The type is custom, and we're going to just change that, select to that, and I want two points because 1.10, and this is at minus 100. I'm just going to, and I think that's what it's looking for. Yeah, so that's flaps down, that's flaps mid, that's flaps up. So, we have all the basic set up here. Uh, we do want a throttle cut. Edit, and I'm going to set the active condition to be SD up. SD is my two position on the uh, right shoulder. Same one I use for all my throttle cuts. So, when it's pushed down, and there it's live. Oh, 
I'm just checking that everything works correctly. So there we've set everything up for the basic model except for the, the audio callouts. If you want to know how to set up audio callouts, I cover that in my first video on Spectrum for Ethos users where we set up the basic model for the eFlight Mall. Now, the next step is we're going to go into RF system. We're going to pick the external module, set it to on, set the type, and we're going to scroll down and pick multi-module. And what we do normally is it will default to the one you've used most recently or FlySky. In this case, you want to scroll up to find DSM and we are going to just pick Auto. And you'll notice there's a bind button there. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is, I'm just going to make sure you can see this, and I'm going to take the module, I'm going to slot it in there, and we'll just click it down. So the lights come on, and it's good. So let, let me uh, zoom out, and we'll get the module, model back here, and we're going to bind it. Now, these UMX models are pretty neat, and they have a unique feature in Spectrum Land, which is they auto-bind. So, if you have not bound it yet, I'll just get that off there, they will automatically go into bind mode when you power them on if they don't see a radio that they know. So we're just going to power it up. And you can just see a hint of that flashing. It'll go through, and it's in auto bind mode. So we're going to go back here. We're going to tap that bind button. Bind. And I'm just going to move that away. Bind. And I did not get far enough away. So let me step out and over. And two meters away. And there we've discovered the perils of channel mapping. I was using AETR, and I forgot one very, very simple lesson, which is I did not load the AETR firmware on my, on my module. I've got the TAER firmware. So we need to shuffle some channels. We're going to take throttle. I'm going to scroll down. We're going to set it to channel 7. I'm going to take elevator, set it to channel 3, and we're accepting the move. Aileron, set it to channel 2, and then we're going to go back to throttle, and we're going to set it to channel 1. That, and then just to make sure everything is nice and in order, I'm just going to move that up. And what I've done is I've just rejiggered the channels now so that everything is should be correct. And I'm just doing a quick control check. So I've got elevator up and down. My rudder is very definitely rever needs reversing. So outputs. So I'm set to normal inverted. And my ailerons also need inversion.
And just to double check, just make sure throttle is working. And we don't have anything set up in yet in terms of the uh, flapper on feature or the uh, safe feature. So we need to do go through the, the setup procedure for those two. And that involves some You notice what I what I did there was I put the uh, sticks into opposite corners like that, and then I clicked the safe button five times rapidly. I'm just making sure. So now I've got panic on there, and I have everything else set up correctly. This was outside of that little oops with the uh, channel ranges because I forgot which firmware I had loaded on my module. And just to be clear, your module normally will not need that change. I loaded a custom firmware build, the TAER firmware, so that it does not remap my spectrum. Your spectrum will probably come with the AE, or sorry, your multi-module will probably come with the AETR firmware which will auto remap. So you want to set up your channels AETR. I don't like that. I don't like having the module doing stuff that I didn't program it directly to do. So that's why I use this. I do have the remapping still left on there so that my, my throws are remapped from 100% free sky world to 100% spectrum world, which is only 78% of free sky world. Now, there is one last thing I need to do, and that is to go back into the mixers and let's set up some expo and, and dual rates. So I'm gonna go edit, and I'm going to add 10% expo, and I want this always active, and we're gonna add a second rate and turn that down to 70. And we'll, what we're going to do is press this. And I'm going to pick my full SA up is my 100% rates. And notice I've got that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to long press here. And I'm going to invert. So that now I have two rates. When the switch is up, it's full rates. When the switch is any other position, it's low rates. And we're just going to go and do the same thing on elevators. So we want, oops, that's the wrong curve. We want 10% expo. You probably heard the uh, accident. You can see I accidentally tapped new curve, so I'm just going to delete that curve. Now we'll go add new rates. Again, say up, long press. Tap invert. Make sure the checkbox goes there. And now we're going to do this. Just want to remind, remind you that you see all the rates for the control and all the, the curves or expos for the control that you have selected right here on one screen. You can even see differential. That is, uh, just to be clear, differential only does something if you've got two channels. So don't muck with it. And I don't like to put any expo or rates on my rudder. I fly the rudder very gently. The model recommends 10% expo on every control surface and 70% rates on every control surface. I'm leaving my rudders alone because I like the rudder just the way it is. Now I did notice that I've got, my rudder is a little bit out. So we're going to go to center sub trim. And 
There, and that took a little bit of sub trim, but the rudder is now straight. I'm just touching this, and you can tell I have armed the AS3X by, by bumping the throttle. If you power cycle it again, you will not have AS3X. You won't have that little chatter as the aircraft moves until you give it about 10% throttle. So, now you have it. The aircraft is set up, it's ready to fly. The only thing I have to do at this point is set up my callouts. So I'll go, I'll go ahead and do that uh, separately. I'm using the exact same set of callouts I used in the first mall setup video. So it'll work just pretty much the same way. Uh, the only thing I've done here that I didn't do in that video is set up my uh, safe. And what we'll do there is I'll actually show you what I do for callouts. You know, I go special function. So, and we're gonna play track, enable, active condition, and I press the button and hold it so that it's in safe mode. And then we go and we pick a file, and I'm gonna scroll up, and I pick this thing. This is from, I th think it's from the uh, Amber Sound Pack. But what it does is, it says pink monkey. It's close to panic, it doesn't say panic, and I think it's kind of funny when I'm at the field and I'm flying along and so I use it. Um, and I use that for panic on all my airplanes. Uh, regular stabilization on the mode switch, on the flight mode switch, I'll use stabilized mode, acro mode, typically for AS3X or rate stabilization, and then stabilization off. Well, there you have it. A little bit of uh, fun there, getting it bound up. Um, I did have to change one uh, to muck with it. It didn't want auto. So I'll just show you, actually, I did have to hard code it to DSMX 2F uh, and channels one to eight. That got it to bind up. You gotta play with that sometimes. 90% of the time, auto works. If auto doesn't work, my next step is always DSMX 2F, channels one to eight, and nine times out of 10, it binds up. So there you have it. I've powered that off. I do need to charge these and I have to change those connectors out. I do not like these JST red connectors. I'm gonna replace those with XT30s, but we're good to fly.